what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here we'll be talking about halloween ends in this video here today it's been a while since i touched on halloween ends i just wanted to let some weeks pass before i even did a video like this because it's the more i sit on it the more i'm convinced that what i'm saying is something that many of you probably agree with there's probably some videos out there that have already touched on this um i revisited the movie a couple times and i still hold on to what i say i do not believe that halloween ends is a poorly made movie i don't believe it's a bad movie it has bad elements to it just like any other movie but across the board in comparison to some other things i've seen this year especially after going through that travesty that is jeepers creepers reborn halloween ends is not a bad movie you might be able to label it I, you can say it's a bad halloween movie but in general movie making this is not a bad movie it's a movie that has some structuring issues more than anything to me the placement of this story is not correct and when i say it's not correct i mean that by there's something in this trilogy that could have come off a lot better had you done it in reverse order because while watching halloween ends something to me would honestly think that they would have been better off doing this as halloween 2018 you're introducing us to the character of rohan campbell's character Corey cunningham who is not really part of the marketing at all whatsoever for halloween ends it was literally michael versus laurie uh and it's, if we're being honest that's really all it was yes there are some remnants of other things but they marketed heavily around michael versus Lori. that's what they marketed it around had you have made this story halloween 2018 and not done that as much doubt that back while also letting rohan campbell talk about his role talk about the character of Corey a little bit get us excited versus us kind of just being seeing him mentioned in the plot synopsis and other stuff like that this could have worked better as a 2018 movie. Now, obviously, you would need to tweak some things. One, Corey would not die in that movie. Uh, he would not be becoming Michael Myers either in that movie. He would not be a straight-up copycat killer. I would take that out of there, too. Uh, and he would be dating Allison very early on. I would have just had him as Cameron. He would have been Cameron's character. Instead of Cameron, you have Corey. Because then what you could do is you could have something play out in that first movie if you want to center it on Corey, where you could explore how the town of Haddonfield has maybe had some neg negativity just lurking within it for the past 40 years ever since what happened to Lori Strode and her friends all that time ago. Also, how Lori is presented in Halloween Ends, I've seen people argue that it makes no sense to them because of the fact that from a logical perspective, how you've written it, why is she why is she so concerned about his escape when he's locked up? But now that he's out in the open, she decides to let all of her walls down and she's just happy go lucky, living her best life. And it's nice to see. <laughs> it's nice to see. But when you write it like this and you already have this that existed prior, many people would argue you need to flip that. Because what you could have done is again with Corey. Corey could have been someone that that same tragedy happened. Jeremy still dies. And the town of Haddonfield, who, again, is just riddled with folks who can't let go of what Michael Myers has done, even though Lori herself, as we meet her in the 2018 movie, in my head, has let that go. There are some things that traumatize her, but she's not as sheltered as we see her and downrodden and just in the dumps as she is in that 2018 movie they've actually got. You take that, put that into a reverse order of how she is in ends, and then have Corey's narrative still play out, have bodies start dropping around town, and people think it's Corey, but it's actually the return of Michael Myers. Michael Myers is back. He's someone who people thought was dead. Uh, or he, well, actually, yeah, you'd have to also tweak the fact that he wasn't locked up for 40 years. And I'm I, I'm willing to let that slide. I'm willing to let that slide just to make this trilogy structured better. He returns after 40 years and he starts killing people. They think it's Corey, but it's actually the return of Michael Myers. That's the 2018 movie with Corey already being here. Then you have Halloween Kills. That can play out the same way play out the same way you have mob mentality mob rules michael's going on a rampage uh the ending of the 2018 movie though in my head would not have included that fire you would save that for halloween ends uh the mob mentality though and all that stuff plays out how it would in the kills movie Corey is prevalent there too he also does not die there then you get to halloween ends where you have a different narrative play out i don't have that really mapped out in my head 
But what you would do is you would have it end how the 2018 movie ended. You would have it end by maybe having Corey present for that. Or maybe Corey has sacrificed himself to protect Allison and Lori from Michael Myers at this point. But uh, at the end of the day, the movie would end basically how the 2018 movie ended. Lori has set up a trap for Michael or Michael gets, gets trapped somewhere else. And they just set his ass on fire and watch him burn. And then we don't even have to see him burn. The camera just or the movie just ends with his breathing to signify that maybe there's a chance that he lived and survived that fire we won't get the answer because that would be the end of this team's iteration of halloween i just think honestly the problem with halloween ends isn't that it is a overly bad movie you can argue yes it is a bad halloween movie i think it's structured incorrectly in terms of you could take so many elements in that movie that work for me switch them around place them in the 2018 movie instead keep certain people present from the 2018 movie more specifically Corey. have him exist all the way through to the end you can still kill him but at least he was here from the beginning that way when people watch halloween 2018 and kills they don't turn on ends and feel like it's so detached from the rest of the first two movies you were just working on heck you could even still have karen die in halloween kills because then that would at least give give Lori some more interesting material to, to focus on going into my version of Halloween ends where you have the same outcome with Michael being locked up in some location setting his ass on fire watching him burn Lori gets the final laugh if Corey is alive he gets the final laugh because the town of Haddonfield thought that he was some big bad boogeyman that they just couldn't let go of because of their trauma and all of those themes that we know this trilogy was exploring about evil and placing that blame on Corey uh, all of that stuff could have still been explored it's just that a lot of people weren't buying what you were selling because of the way your narrative is structured you can defend the narrative as much as you want to i know i basically am kind of doing that by saying it probably should have been reworked but people had gripes with the story i honestly feel like it's because of how it was placed Corey could have been received very positively if he was introduced in the very first movie at the start of your trilogy not at the end because by the end and how you had already structured your first two movies People were wanting to see that final battle between Lori and Michael. They got it, but the marketing also didn't make things better either when that was all you marketed. But you can guys let me know what you think about that down in the comment section below. Do you think a restructure would have worked? If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there.